is Björn Jonsson. I'm a senior producer here at DICE. I'm also heading up the operations team who works on all the different post-launch content for our games. We are really excited about Battlefield 3 Premium. Not only will you get early access to our upcoming expansion packs, you will also get access to more advanced online features, unique in-game content, as well as taking part in exclusive events that we will run throughout this program. And with these exclusive videos, we'd like to give you a more of an inside look of what Premium is all about. I'm Niklas Vigrius, I'm the lead designer for the DICE operations team and I'm uh, currently in charge of designing uh, the X-Packs for Battlefield 3. I started at DICE in 2004 as an animator doing weapon animations for BF2 and um, since then I've moved on to design. The idea behind Close Quarters is to capitalize on what the Battlefield universe is. In one second you can be a uh, infantryman running through a house and in the next second you can be a pilot soaring through the skies in a jet fighter so it has all these very exciting elements and, and what we want to do with close quarters is to really capitalize on the uh, infantry focused you know tight combat environment uh, now with maps that really really cater to it in order to enhance that we've also introduced what we call HD destruction which basically means that you can use only your rifle. I mean, normally you would have to use like tank shells and bazookas in order to bring down you know, these big stone walls. But now it's like plaster, wooden panels, furniture. So you will be like a destruction machine, even only with your uh, carbine machine. It makes everything very vivid and very kind of in your face. In Battlefield 3 Close Quarters you get four new maps, all focused on the indoor battlefield and the Close Quarters experience. You also get ten new assignments, which will allow you to unlock ten new weapons. And finally you get two new game modes, Conquest Domination and Gun Master. Conquest Domination is the Close Quarters take on Conquest. You basically have less amount of flags with much quicker cap time. So flags tend to change owners very quickly, but also you have no safe spawns, you don't have any home bases. So it's really, really important that you keep control of these key areas. And I think squad play is the key factor in achieving victory in Conquest Domination because it's really important to really maintain control of these areas because you have, you have no other safe zone, you just need to do that. And then we have Gunmaster, which is a really uh, action-packed jump-in-and-play mode, which is actually a race, uh, where you start out with a pistol, uh, and then as you get kills with that pistol, you advance to the next tier of weapons. In order to win the mode, you need to go through the powerful weapons and ultimately win by getting a knife kill in the end. If you do that before everyone else, you win the race, you win the mode, and it's all smiling faces. <laughs> <laughs> all smiling faces or one smiling It's actually true, there's only one smiling face, and then there's like 15 frowns, but, but hey, it's all smiling faces, it's a fun mode. <laughs> Zebra Tower is our smallest and most action-packed map. It's essentially a sky bar on top of a skyscraper. It's based around the classic and horseshoe-shaped design that many Battlefield players know from Wake Island, but now in this condensed form, you can use that middle space to really flank the enemy, which is really exciting, especially since you have the two floors set up as well, so you can actually use the staircases to come up behind people who are guarding like the top floor. Uh, and we've, we have some good sniping spots there. For example, you can have a good defensive position on top of the, in the swimming pool area. That's a, that's a pro tip right there. It also has a lot of corridors and rooms with very, very thin walls. So what you can do is open up 
flanking routes by just actually shooting big holes in the walls. So you really need to find your spots if you're trying to play defensively. And if you're on the offense, you need to move very quickly because it's a small map, it's a lot of circulation, a lot of action, so movement is key. Danya Fortress is the most varied map. It's built upon this old fort based on a hilltop. So it has this really old stone, catacombish fundamental base. And then they have tried to build this nice, posh, luxurious palace on top of it with lots of art and you know, nice furniture and things. And now, you know, war has come, so it's partly destroyed, and you have all these big holes and openings that allow for you know, flanking and going between floors and so on. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it has lots of stairs uh, that lead to uh, either flag positions or to the other floor, of course, and also to certain sniping spots that you can uh, like have an overview of the courtyard or big corridors. So I think the best tactic to employ on Tanya Fortress is to use really proper squad play in order to defend the key locations, like the big entrance room, uh, cellar. They have all kinds of entrances, so protecting them needs more people, so a good squad will really be able to lock one of those down, and that's what's going to achieve it. Operation 9 to 5 is our biggest and most destructible map, I would say. It is essentially an office with the cubicles and the desks and the cafeteria and the bathrooms, and they're all not very sturdy. So there's lots and lots of destruction. You will see someone on the other edge of the office, and he's partly covered by you know the cubicles and the furniture, but you will just shoot through that and, and start putting you know downrange fire on them. So it's still close quarters, but it features the longest ranges in the expansion pack, and it makes it really interesting. Uh, and I think on Operation 95 you see the most kind of varied weaponry being used. And also, it has a garage that goes kind of underneath the whole complex where you know the former employees had all their cars. So you can use the garage as a traveling hub, if you will. You can go up that fire escape or through that staircase uh, and end up on the other side of the map. So you really need to mind those extra exits when you play Operation Night. Scrap metal is the most vertical map. It is an old factory. Uh, parts of it are actually so old it's not being used anymore. Uh, it has a, a kind of a two-fort design where you have one big area, which is actually uh, like a worn down part of the factory. And then you have the still kind of functional area on the other side. And the thing is those two sides are connected only through pretty narrow passages. So keeping those under control is really, really key. In order to protect those entrances, you need to control those while staying in control of your rooftop, because that's another entrance point, and that's very open and long range, so you're gonna see a lot of snipers covering those rooftops. And also, since it's, it's an old factory, it, it, it's made out of mostly concrete and metal, so you won't have the same abilities to you know, tear down walls and, and create flanking routes. So positioning, I think, is the, the absolute key to winning on scrap. It's very exciting when you have control of one side and you're trying to figure out how to assault the enemy on the other side. And I think that's, that's a very exciting proposition that comes with, with Scrap Metal. 